All of the concepts have the same idea of public communication of science and technology. They somehow involve communication of science that that connects publics or different audiences with the scientific community. Some of the words, like popularization, imply that the information is just coming from the scientists and going to the uh, to these different audiences, to the publics. Whereas the appropriation idea captures the fact that the, the community is trying to figure out how to use the information and has a little bit more of the two-way dialogue uh, notion rather than just one-way communication. So the deficit model is the idea that people don't know enough about science and if we just fill in information to, to fill in the deficit, then everything will be better, whatever everything is. What we know is that's not true. What we know is that people make decisions based on emotional issues and on certain different kinds of ethical values or community values that uh, people sometimes have the right information, but there uh, uh, other factors come into to what they're doing. Um, and so we need, in, again, in the real world, we need a much more sophisticated understanding of how people are working. Now, that doesn't mean that some of the activities that the deficit model leads you to do are wrong. Um, in fact, really good exhibits and books and newspapers and all of those kinds of they're important that's that's how people get information we just have to uh, move away from the idea that all we have to do is provide that information and then the problem will be solved the, the models that that I and other people have described uh, are are theoretical models and when you actually try to apply them in the real world none of them is perfect um, for example, if you wanted to have a, a public engagement model where you were going to have these discussions, people still need information in order to have those, uh, those good conversations. And so sometimes that will mean mixing in parts of the deficit model, where that is where you're just delivering information. Now, you'd ra hope that it's the contextual model where you're appropriate to what people need and what they want. Um, but the real world is a mix of those different models. The mo what the models are, they're useful for analyzing what's happening and understanding what some of the interactions are that you're observing in a real world science communication context. It, it's a really good question because the first thing we teach anybody when we're teaching communication is to think about your audience. You have to think about your audience. If you, if you talk from your perspective, you'll never connect. So, and that's something which can be supported with research. There's research to show that, that, that people connect better. So one of the things we have to help sci natural scientists, physicists, biologists, help them understand is that there is research to give them an answer as to uh, as to how they can best communicate, we also have to get them to have to understand that it's in their own interests to learn how to make those connections better. So about twenty, a little over twenty years ago, several of us who were starting to work in this field found that we didn't have any place to publish our work. It was too technical for the, for the general science magazines, but it wasn't really sociology and it wasn't really anthropology. And so a couple of journals got started at that time. One was a journal that I, uh, a colleague of mine, John Durant, started called Public Understanding of Science, and later I became the editor of that journal. A different journal which already existed, it was called Knowledge, began to start publishing in this area and it eventually changed to names and it was called Science Communication. And then a few years later, uh, a group in Italy started an online open access journal called the Journal of Science Communication. That, and so there's now, a, and there's other journals now that are also publishing work in this area. It's really important for us to have that variety of different places to, to publish, uh, partly because there's so much work. When we first started Public Understanding of Science, we published four times a year. Now they are publishing eight times a year, as is the journal Science Communication. 
the online journal, uh, Journal of Science Communication. It's confusing because their names are very close. Um, they have, they are not quite as scholarly. They, the work that gets published there is often perhaps people who are just begun to learn how to do research or it's a it's a very detailed special project that really might not make it into the big international journals but because they are becoming well known they're getting better work and also because they are free open access online the things that are published there are much more accessible to people who are not part of a big institution who don't have can't afford to have a, a subscription to the the main public understanding of science uh, journals from the big academic publishers. So I think it's really good that we have this, this mix of different kinds of publications. It's a really interesting question, and especially for someone like me coming from a developed country where we certainly have poverty, but not of the kind of deep social problems that you have here in Latin America. And I think um, the first thing that has to happen is that there, and I, and I know it already does happen, is that this discussion within the community of why are we doing science in a country which has so much poverty and, and people without homes and people without food and bad water and all those things, why should we be devoting re any resources to just pure science research? There's a good argument to, to be made about uh, how it creates uh, curiosity and opportunities and and um, it's part of our cultural heritage but obviously the community has to be able to describe to understand what that justification is and also to be able to say what part of the scientific enterprise is going more towards applied projects towards clean water or new energy or better foods or or things like that and that discussion has to happen very openly, and maybe it does. I don't know enough about how the discussion happens here uh, in Mexico or in other Latin American countries. But it has to be a very open conversation, and that conversation has to include the public. So it has in the conversations with the public, you say, we're committing resources to, to science. Here's the way we think about how we balance them. You tell us. Um, in your community or in your village or in your city what what you see as the balance and what you see as the problems and how your goals for your children and how you want to create creativity for them but also you want to feed them and you want them to have a, a good house and good schools how do we balance those things and I think part of what's important is for us to realize that the community has good ideas and they they understand these complexities and to exclude them or to or to say well let's have the discussion internally and then push it out to them misses the point I think it's much better for us to try to keep um, keep them in as part of the conversation because then it will change what the outcome is and it will also then be an outcome that everybody feels is the appropriate outcome To me, I think any time you're dealing with science, you have to deal with communication. There's, a, there's a, one of the earliest books of research on communication within the sciences has this wonderful title. It's called Communication, the Essence of Science. If you don't communicate, it's not actually science. So that means that all the people who are working on other kinds of social issues, whether it's climate change or, or biodiversity or poverty or clean water or environmentalism, all those things, those people have to communicate their work in order for it to become uh, effective and to be really useful in, uh, in solving all of these incredible problems that we have not just in Latin America but all over the world. So that means to me that if a, if a university wants to commit to doing good science, it also has to commit to doing good science communication. And that will actually improve the impact of the work that it does.